we are going to give you uh, the assignment something like that. Okay, all right. Okay, guys, so the, the recording has already begun. Okay, now let me share my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Okay, wait, no, it's, it's coming. Okay, can you guys see my screen right now? Okay, that's good. All right, all right, thanks. Thanks for the response, all right? Okay, guys, so uh, basically uh, the, the title of this subject is Principles of Computer Architecture. So as you can see, the code is EKT303. Can you guys see clearly? Oh, let me zoom it a bit. Okay, all right. So, uh, this is a principles of computer architecture subject. Okay, basically, uh, they are four cost outcomes. So, uh, I think you, you guys are being keep on uh, reminded, right? So, what are uh, these cost outcomes are? So, these cost outcomes are the thing that we want the student to achieve by the end of the semester. So bear in mind everything that you guys going to be taught, everything uh, that you guys going to be tested will revolve around these four COs, right? So as you can see, there are four COs. CO number one is ability to apply the knowledge of computer architecture. So basically, uh, what you guys going to be taught in this uh, uh, subject, what you guys going to be tested in this subject is going to be around the knowledge of computer architecture. Right, so when we, we say computer architecture, it is really referring to the computer, right, that we are having today. Uh, your laptop, your phone, right, everything that have the, the processor, Right, so a complete system uh, that can work as a computer is a computer. So we're going to discuss a lot of things about computer architecture. So these are the, the, the first cost outcome that we want the student to achieve. The second one is the ability to analyze the performance of a uh, computer system. So uh, you guys going to be taught on how we can analyze, right? So for an example, why we say uh, this processor A, Intel i5 is better than, for example, uh, AMD uh, Ryzen, right? I mean, this is just for the sake of example, right? So, I mean, we, we need to have something to compare, right? So, we, we're going to teach you in this class so that you know how to compare it and, uh, and you can say that this system is better than, this system A is better than system B, right? So, by the end of the semester, you need to be able to uh, analyze the performance of a computer system. So, you know, for the test and whatsoever, you guys, you guys are going to be tested on this. And then the CO number three is ability to design small scale computer system. So, the this CO mainly going to be achieved throughout your, of course, uh, the classes and also the lab, right? So, I mean, we, we try to relate, you know, whatsoever we are doing in the lab with the things that we are learning in the class. Right, so what you guys gonna do in the lab? Uh, you guys gonna you know you know to try to construct a computer uh, an emulation of computer system uh, by using this uh, quarter software, which uh, I'm gonna explain uh, to you guys today. And then finally, CO number four is ability to apply appropriate CAD tool, right? Uh, computer aided design CAD tool. Uh, to design, verify, and test the computer system. So, I think for me, uh, these are the, the, the one of the, the most important thing. Right? So, you need to know how to use this CAD tool. So, in this subject, the CAD tool that uh, we're going to use is Quarter Software. Right? So, uh, I'm telling you guys, this is a very good knowledge for you guys to master. Because if you know this knowledge, then uh, it's a big advantage for you guys uh, to land a job, you know, in the semiconductor industry, you know, in Malaysia, mostly uh, staying in Penang. So if, if you guys have this kind of knowledge, then it, it, of course, it's going to help to boost, you know, your your visibility, 
your job opportunity later after you graduated. If you guys have any question, please stop me and you can ask me, right? Okay, now we go into the course assessment. Right, so we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're going to have eight assessment for this semester, which we already divided into specific weeks. So I'm going to show you later and I'm also going to share with you guys later all this uh, information so that you guys can keep on referring it throughout the semester. So we're going to have tests, which we I mean everything we're going to do online. So you guys are going to submit online and if there's a test, we're going to do it live in front of your PC with the uh, supervision of the lecturers. Right, so uh, we're going to have a uh, test. Oh, I think I'm skipping. Okay, so. Right, so we guys going to have test, which is uh, 10%. And then you guys are going to have lab assignment, which is also 10%. So uh, what we're going to oh. do... Hello? You guys have any question? All right. If you don't have any question, please mute your mic, all right? Okay. So uh, we're going to have uh, test and then we're going to have lab assignment. For the uh, lab this semester, we're not going, we are not going to ex uh, assess your lab or give marks to the lab mean uh, in every lab that you're going to do because the lab is your res responsible so it's your responsible to do your lab and to understand the lab what we're going to do is that we're going to do lab assignment which going to test the knowledge on the lab right because what we, we found out from the previous semester i mean uh, most of you are just copying the lab which are not good right so for me i think uh copying is one of the, the 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 learning method but most of you just copy and just try to run it without any attempt you know to trying to understand the lab so that is a problem then later when we give you assignment we give you mini project you know open book book exam design question you are not able to answer it why because you just copy from your friends without trying to understand each line of the codes, how it functions, why they do it this way, that way, right? So I'm telling you guys in the beginning of the semester for that you take note and then don't repeat the same mistake. You know, else you're going to get the same, you know, uh, low marks. Uh, all right, so then uh, you, you're going to have a mini project so mini project is 10 percent so uh let this mini project gonna start on week six of the semester and then uh we have assignment one which is gonna give you five percent and then we have one quiz also giving you five percent and then we have open book exam so when we name it as open book exam of course there will be no answer that can be found on the internet on the in the textbook right because it's open book exam you can open you can refer to anything as a reference to help you answer but not giving you 100 percent you know answer that you can copy and paste so that's why i think I mean, it is important for you guys to to really try to understand you know uh this subject matter and then not just by relying on your friends you know all right so it's going to be 30 percent is significant uh contribution to your final marks and then you're gonna have assignment two which is gonna be also uh one of the toughest one because it is gonna give you 20 percent of your uh final marks and then finally there will be a presentation All right so the presentation will be in the middle of your mini project right so the lecturer going to assess your your effort you know and then your knowledge uh, what you have done so far in your mini project and it's going to be consist of 10 percent of your final marks all right any question on the cost assessment all right if you if you if you guys don't want to you know uh talk uh on the mic you can also type on the chat box right if you have any question all right, so uh, I assume for now you don't have any question. 
Okay, then these are the, the references that we're going to use. But mostly we're going to use just William Stallings, right? So you guys can go and find the PDF. If you don't, you cannot find one, just let me know. I can share with you guys. But I'm not going to share it in the Google Classroom. Alright, so uh, William Stolling, so you can have the textbook and I think it's, it's good for you guys to read the textbook, to refer to it and give you better understanding in this subject matter. Alright, so for this subject, there are going to be uh, three lecturers that uh, will be conducting the teaching. So the first one is me, uh, Dr. Muslim Mustafa, and then the second one will be uh, Dr. Nofadila Mahrum, and then there's Third one is Dr. Salina Muhammad Asi. Right, so that's why if you can see there are three lab sessions. So I mean, each of the lecturer will take one lab session. Right, but there's going to be only one lecture which uh, will be divided uh, with all the three lecturers. Right. Okay, guys. So now let's look into the, the you know, this is uh, our teaching plan. And this is going to be also uh, a guidance for you guys to plan your study too. All right. So as you can see uh, on week one, we're going to cover the lecture, uh, the first lecture, uh, topic one. So all of the lecture notes, you can uh, refer it on the Google Classroom. I've already uploaded it. All right, then uh, goes to week two. Uh, week two, uh, we're going to have a performance uh, uh, we're going to discuss about performance issues. So in the class, we're going to do uh, some exercise on the performance uh, calculation. All right, so uh, then uh, we're going to, on the third week, we're going to have a uh, discuss on the top level view of computer function and interconnection. All right, then you can see here, there will be a quiz in, on week number three. All right, so take note here. Then uh, week four, Again, week five, right? So week five, then we're going to have a test, uh, which we're going to be conducted online. And then also we're going to release, right? So this is the release date, the laboratory assignment, which you guys are going to uh, be given around like one or two weeks. Later, we're going to decide on the, the, the duration of the time for you guys to complete the lab assignment. Right then, uh, as you guys know, then after week five, then you guys are gonna have a semester break for the Muslim. Then you guys are gonna celebrate Hari Raya. Right then, you, after that, you guys are gonna come back on week six. Uh, then uh, we're gonna start to release the mini project. Right, so we're going to uh, discuss uh, the details about the mini project later uh, because in this mini project, you guys are gonna work uh, in a group. Right uh, then, week seven, cache memory, week eight internet memory all right okay by week eight then you see we're going to conduct the mini project uh, progress presentation so as you guys can see you guys gonna have two weeks before you need to present your progress so you guys can say why is so fast because most of the thing that you're gonna be doing in your mini project has been provided to you in the lab session right so actually nothing much so this will just portray your understanding on the subject matter and help the lecturer to assess, you know, how far you guys uh, can understand this subject. And then goes to week nine, uh, external memory. Then we're going to release assignment number one, right? Then uh, week 10, week 11, then we're going to release uh, assignment number two, which consists of 20 cents. Or assignment, assignment one is just 5% of the marks. Right then we have uh, week 12. So week 12, you guys are gonna have mini project final presentation. Right, we're going to do on week 12 because we go, we want to give way to you guys for those of you that are taking GDPs. We know that GDPs is also gonna have a lot of presentation, a lot of preparation, right? So we make it early on week 12 to give way for you guys to focus on your GDP. And then we have week 13, then week 14, we're going to have the open book exam, which is going to cover most of the things that you have learned in this subject. All right, guys. So uh, I think that's all for this uh, course introduction. All right. So any question for the course introduction?
Thanks for the response. Why are you guys not asking questions? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, are you guys afraid of me or is it still, you know, still like uh, not in the mood to begin the lecture, but you have no other option to join it, right? Okay, it's okay, right? Okay. Okay, guys, so, uh, okay, if no question, if you have any question later, then you can ask me. All right, so now let's go uh, into the lab, right? Okay, as you guys can see, I've shared in the uh, Google Classroom. So this, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the lab, right? The lab that uh, you guys need to do uh, to understand uh, on for the I mean to understand for the lab part which we gonna use a uh, quarter software right so this is a quarter software all right so along the way uh, I'll try to explain to you guys what are these uh, quarter software what are the technology that we are using in quarter software right okay but before we go into quarter software uh, we go into uh, the introduction to combinational uh, very log first right Okay, guys, so uh, what we uh, are learning here is uh, this is uh, what they call it the programming language, right? So there, there are many types of programming language, for example, uh, C, C++, right? Java, uh, Python, but those programming language are focusing on software part right so if you are coding using c you are creating a software c plus plus you create a software python you create a software right uh whatever else you know java whatever so all those things are software right the things that uh is being loaded into a computer to function but here very long i mean this is uh one of the language that we code to design a circuit right so that's why they call it uh hdl hardware description language all right so hardware description language uh, what it means by hardware description language it means that you are creating a circuit, right? You are creating a circuit by using the, uh, what do you call it? By using the uh, programming. So this is just a dot. It's the end of the uh, Normally I use, uh, what do you call it? Uh, PowerPoint, okay, wait, let me open PowerPoint. Okay, bear with me. My laptop is a bit slow. It's an old laptop. It's just waiting time to go to the graveyard. All right, so HDL, right? Okay, so HDL is hardware. D stands for description. And L stands for 
language. All right, so uh, I mean, I mean, there there are many types of HDN, right? So one of the famous one is uh, Verilog, and also VHDL. Right, so but in this uh, lecture we're going to use uh, very long right so uh, you know this is the hardware description language so you have C right you have C you have C++ so you have Python right Python so all this language is a software right software so what is software software like you know you you want to develop apps you want to develop a program right where you're going to load inside a hardware so you have a program you you buy a pc right then you buy the software you buy the pc then you buy windows software you install it so this software is going to run on hardware right so this is software part so what we're going to do here is we're going to construct a circuit so this is a circuit so you can construct a you know an end gate you know you can connect it to you know all gate right so connect it uh, together right to another gate so this is the example so you can construct a circuit by using programming language where they call it as hdl what's the difference between okay uh okay okay i can see uh questionnaire that's good so uh, yeah, I think if you guys can respond, is better so that I know that you guys are you know got some interest in this uh, subject, uh, or else you don't have any option you know to go through this subject until the end of the semester. Okay, so it's like an assembly language, correct? Uh, sorry, no, it's not like an assembly la assembly language. Okay, what is assembly language? Okay, assembly language is still for software. It, it is a software that you're going to load it inside the computer. Okay, so there, there are a lot of programming language, so there, there are a lot of level, right? So C language is uh, level, so then goes up Python, right? Python. And if you go down, here is uh, assembly language. Assembly language. Then goes down, then you have binary. These are the level, you know, the, the level. Okay, what are these level means? So um, here is a computer, right? So here is your, your processor. Okay, let's see. Let's see. The CPU. Right, so this is your processor. So the language that can be understand by a computer is binary. Right, it is 1010. Zero, one, zero. So the computer only understand 1 and 0. They don't understand our language right okay so what are the closest language that the computer can understand assembly language so that's why assembly language is quite complicated because you construct the language according to the way that, that the computer is going to read and understand it right so that's why if i'm not sure if you guys comparing c and assembly which one is uh, easier to understand c because why C is higher level language, right? But now they have another language, Python. Python is uh, one of the easiest language, one of the famous programming language nowadays, right? Which make the life for the coder or the, the computer programmer easier because this is a high level language. Okay, what are the, the difference? So the difference is the conversion time, the conversion complexity. So whenever you want to put your program in, in the CPU, right, you have to convert it into binary, the lowest level one, the binary. So assembly language is the easiest one, I mean, is, is the less complexity one to convert it to binary. As you go up the process of the conversion, so that what it means by compile, right? So when you done the programming, you compile. So when you compile it, then it is changing, you know, the, the human readable code into computer readable code, which is binary, one zero, one zero. All right, so th these are the, I mean, like, for 
this is just for the sake of knowledge eh, for you guys right so that you guys know what are you guys are learning and how you guys going to apply right so if you guys can see things better then it helps your understanding better okay that's for the first question assembly language right so the second question what are the difference between vhdl and also very long okay uh okay this is just like a language so for an example uh, we are in malaysia we are using malay language right so that is uh, our communication uh, uh, medium and then if you go to you know europe or you know us then we have to speak in english right so that they they can understand us and we can understand them right so it's, it's just a language you know so english being being uh, designed by mr a and malay being designed by this mr b right so but those two things serve the same purpose which is for the means of communication so same goes here so very long vhdl both are different language but serve the same purpose of constructing a circuit Right, so if you guys learn very long, then it's not hard for you to switch to VHDL. It's going to be kacang putih lah. Right, so it's going to be easy to convert from very long to VHDL. And if you guys master very long. So same goes here, right? If you guys master C, right, so that's why in the in the first year of your uh, uh, study, right, you guys going to learn C programming because this is the, you know, the foundation of uh, programming language. So if you can understand C, it's easy for you to port or to move to another programming language. Also assembly. Assembly language is also helping you guys to, to have a better foundation for the programming. Right, so here in HDL, very long VHDL serve the same purpose, help you guys to construct a circuit. Uh, but the thing is there are some syntax difference in very long and VHDL. It's just a different language, but serve the same uh, purpose. All right, thanks for the question. Okay, uh, okay let's go to interaction to combination of very long. All right, so uh, yeah, this is what I already uh, described before. So uh, this is uh, very long, right? So you guys can go and uh, have a look. I'm going to uh, show you guys one example, then you guys can do it uh, later. All right, so uh, I think it's easier for you guys to use Quartus 13. So I, I'm going to share with you guys later uh, the link for Quartus 13 for you guys to download. So as you guys open your Quartus software, right? So as, as you guys open your Quartus software, you uh, they're going to be a window new project wizard, right? Going to pop out. Right, so you guys need to go through these uh, windows to set up a new project. So you guys can just click next, right? So uh, here is the working directory. So you can name your project, so whatever project. So uh, let's say my project here is introduction uh, lab, right? So we mean in programming right it's better it's a good practice not to use space right because the computer actually they don't understand the space right so you can use underscore right so interaction lab next oh it's really there uh already contains the project over there oh, okay. no. Okay, so uh, this is if you have any existing design files that you guys want to load in, so you can do it here. Else, you just click next. All right, guys. So uh, here is the family and device settings, right? So if, as you can see here, there are a lot of families, right? So area two, cyclone two, cyclone three, cyclone three. Uh, sorry, cyclone three, LS, cyclone four. So what are these things? So uh, basically uh, what we're going to use here, these are the software to design a circuit in a silicon chip that they call it as FPGA. Oops. Okay. 
bit ah uh, All right, so uh, F B G A. All right, so what is F B G A? F B G is field gate program. Uh, sorry, field programmable gate array. All right, so there there are two types of silicon chip. All right, silicon chip, or you can say it as I C, right? Integrated circuit. So there is a FPGA and second one they have ASIC. All right. So I mean, what is the silicon chip, right? So if you guys open your laptop and look at the processor, Intel processor, right? That is a chip that is made from silicon, right? Silicon, the sand, right? So or you can call it as IC integrated circuit. And then if you guys uh, take off your phone, right? If you guys take off any your 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 smart wearables thing, smart watch or whatever, you can see there's a black thing with some legs, right? So that is your chip, right? So you can see I mean, there's a chip with a leg here, right? So this is your silicon chip, right? So these are all the input and output pins. So it can be Intel or it can be AMD, right? So it can be whatever uh, manufacturer. Right, so basically, there are, there are two types, right, right for silicon chips. So they, they can be FPGA, field programmable gate array, and they will, can be also ASIC, right? What is ASIC? ASIC stands for application specific. Oops, specific. I see. I C stand for integrated so my handwriting because I'm using a mouse to write. Okay. Okay, so application specific integrated circuit. This is ASIC. Okay. What are the difference between ASIC and FPGA? ASIC is a chip where they design the chip right they design the circuit within the chip and when they manufacture it you cannot change the circuit in here so the circuit in ac is fixed where else if you guys have the fpga so this is fpga so this is just a blank chip so you can load In, uh, in this chip right so, and then it can work for you guys so you can load it inside here but for this ASIC you cannot change it right because it is fixed so for the FPGA if you don't want this chip you can erase it you can erase it and you another new circuit then load it inside the FPGA Right, so those are the difference, right? Okay, so now here in our lab, we're going to use FPGA. One of the manufacturer of FPGA is Intel, right? So it's, it's actually Altera, but Altera been bought by Intel back then, right? 2000, uh, 2016. Same goes, another big manufacturer for FPGA is Xilinx. Xilinx also has been bought by uh, AMD, not AMD, uh, the, the GPU, uh, the GPU company, uh, what's the name, huh? I forgot it, okay, but also being bought by another company, okay, so right now, so one of the main manufacturer of FPGA is uh, Intel, all right, so the NVIDIA, all right, so NVIDIA bought uh, Xilinx and Intel bought Altera, so now, uh, the two uh, manufacturer is NVIDIA and also Intel. So, but in this case, we are using Intel FPGA, right? Okay, so what are these different names? So, these are the different type of chips that they, they, they produce, right? 
So for example, maybe area two has uh, more uh, logic units, right? So you can construct, for example, using hundred gates, right? But for cyclone two, maybe you can construct about one thousand gates. So cyclone three, maybe you can construct around like uh, one hundred thousand gates. So these are the, the different family. So uh, if you guys are working in the hardware uh, with the hardware later, right? So you guys need to check what are the hardware that you guys are using. So you have to choose accordingly. And then here is the specific. So <clears throat> even if you see in Cyclone 4 GX, right? So there are many variation, right? So you can, you need to choose the correct variation. So later I'm going to show you guys, uh, not today, maybe later, uh, if you guys look on the hardware, how you guys are going to check this, all the specific information. And then you have to key in, key in inside the, the software, uh, this quarter software. All right. So if you guys have any question, please let me know. All right. So uh, else I'm going to understand that you guys understood the whole process. Okay. Then just click next, next, next. All right. So these are the summary what you guys going to construct then. Finish. Okay, so if you guys want to make sure that you have successfully created project, then you should be able to see the, your project name here, uh, Introduction Lab, right? But there's no file set, so it's empty. Okay, now we have to create a new file. There are two ways to create new files. The first one you can click here. It's a new or the paper picture here, right? Or you can click file also the same symbol new, right? So both ways can work. So just click uh, new. All right. So uh, what we are looking here is design files, right? So design file. So if you can see there are a lot of design files, means that there are a lot of design method, right? So in this case, we are using very long, right? Don't go and take system very long. This is a different variation of very long. This is the advanced one, right? Okay, but we are using very long HDL file. So you just click very long and then click OK. All right. Okay, now what we're going to do is that, okay, we'll try to construct a, a circuit, right? We cannot copy. Yeah, yeah. Copy. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. We cannot copy then let's copy. It. Okay, we are uh, slagging a bit because of this uh you know old PC. Sorry, old laptop. All right, okay, what we're going to do is just, you just, uh, you guys can refer to the lab manual, right? So you just type it, all right, very long, and up. And we, B, S, and C, R. All right, so hopefully you guys are opening the lab module and you guys can refer to it. All right, so as you can see this is how we construct a module right so uh okay later i'm going to show you again okay. so first we define input so what are the input the input is a and also b and don't forget the semicolon semicolon is important if you don't have it then you're going to get error output s and then c out right okay then semicolon again then wire so what is wire s and c out Alright, so now goes into how we want the circuit to function. So assign S equal to A and then a cap B, right, then semicolon. Then assign C um, equal to A. If you guys already have the quarters, you can also follow me. Just want to have a grab on this. Uh, we call it uh, end module on this uh, what is uh, software application, right? All right, guys. So uh, 
already finished uh, copying the code. So actually what are the code uh, represent, right? Okay, let me go free. Okay. Right here. Okay, it's lagging a bit. All right. Okay, so what are we constructing here is the half adder. All right, so we can see here a sign. Okay, now we are creating a module, right? So this is a module uh, of half adder. So we give a name. So you can name it uh, according to whatever you want. You can also give your name, let's say Alif or Chong or Ravi, whatever, right? So it's up to you, but better give a name that you can understand it. Right, then inside the bracket here, you need to uh, put whatever input and output file that you are using. So you can see example in this circuit, right? We have two inputs, which is A and B, sorry, which are A and B. And then we have two outputs, which are S and also C out. Right, then you have to declare which one is the input, which one is the output, right? So input is A and B, output is S and also C out. As you can see here, I mean, they declare S and C out as a wire. All right, so uh, in this declaration, there, there are two times, right? If you don't declare it as wire, then it's going to act as a uh, register. All right, okay. What are the difference? Let's go to our drawing pad. Let's go to the next page. Okay, there are two types, right? So wire and another one is a register. So what are the difference between wire and register? All right, so if you guys try to, you know, recall whatever you have learned in your physics or basic electronics, right? So what are the difference between wire and register? So register is a set of as a, it's like a uh, it's a flip flop right so wire as you give an input here right so let's say you give so here's the input as you give for number one or zero then here the output gonna be one or zero but as you take the input right so the output will be uh, nothing right uh, it's gonna be x don't care Right, or whatsoever. So it's, there's no valid input or output here. But for register, as you insert a value, right? For example, you put one, then it's gonna be keep one here. If you take off the input, one will remain. Right? Unless you give another input, you put zero, then it's gonna change to zero. So that's are uh, the difference between wire and register. Wire, if you take the input, then the output will also be removed. But for register, if you give the input, then you take out the input, the output will remain, right? Is That is a register. Okay, now let's go back to our quadrants. All right, any question here, guys? I think this is just a recall, right? So if some of you already took a digit, and I think uh, some of you already familiar with this software, so for those of you that already know this so this is just a recall for you guys so you guys should already know this all right so then uh okay we have complete here then you have to save it okay now we are saving it uh oh All right, so uh, the file name, right, should be the same with the module name, right? So what is our module name? At half. Actually, this is quick and file to current project, save, right? So then you can see your files is already in here, right? Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to compile. So hopefully everything goes well. Right, so you can see here now it start to showing you percentage. Means that the compilation process uh, has been started. Right, so there are a few steps here. So this is a compile design. 
So analysis and synthesis, oh no, this error. It's okay. okay. All right. So that's that's good. So I mean, at least I can show to you guys how to deal with error, right? So don't panic, don't cry if you guys get an error, right? So just remain calm. So what you need to do is that you need to double click at the error, then it's going to point out to you guys uh what the error is, All right? So I think I'm missing some semicolon. Yeah, see. This is a common mistake for programmer. I told you, right? Semicolon. It's a life and death in uh, programming. You miss it, then uh, you're going to have problem, right? So that's good. Right, guys? So this is a simulation on how if you guys are getting error, right? So you just double click, then it's going to point out to you I mean, this line is having problem. So look here, you know, look at the front to the right and look at the back, go reverse and see. Is there anything missing? So for in my case, I'm missing the semicolon here. So I've already added it. Then I have to save it. Then recompile again. Right. So then just wait if there's any error that we miss. Right. Okay. Looking good. Four percent. Right. So as you can see, there there are a few steps that being taken in this uh software. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry, I think I got it wrong here. Oh, all right. Mm. Okay, guys. So the okay. okay let's, let's try this one first. If we solve the problem, then I'm gonna explain to you guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait now, guys. These are the common mistakes that uh, we can do in uh, what is okay, it's undefined here. All right, it has to be the same way, so everything has to be exactly the same. Save, then compile again. Hopefully, this solve the problem. Okay, all right. Solve the problem. Okay, guys, why I'm having the second error there? All right, oh, this is really good, you know. I'm showing you guys all the error that you guys are going to face later. Okay, so uh, the, the module name, you know, because we have only one module, so we can have multiple module, right? So we can have multiple module, but uh, at least we need to have one TLM. So what is TLM? TLM is top level module, right? So top level module is the where the module that going to connect all the modules. Okay, let's say you have a multiple modules, right? Let's say you have, uh, here is a memory mem.v right so this is one very long file then you have uh, alu right so alu dot v right so then you need to have one top level level module so this is your computer for example right so computer dot v so one of these files has to be tlm top level module right the top level module name right which is com here has to be the same as the uh, the project name, right? So in my case, my project name is Introduction Lab. So here is my top level module. So the name here, module name has to be the same with the project name. So I'm pretty sure most of you guys are gonna face this problem. Uh, and then uh, uh, most of you guys are gonna face this kind of problem but please right, uh, refer to this video again so that you can refresh your memory on this error. Okay, there's a question, like main in C. Right, okay. Okay, you want to compare main? Yeah, I think that's a good uh, comparison, right? So we can say it's kind of like a main program in C. So where in main program, you're going to call all those functions, right? Yeah, same goes here. 
but here the 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 top level module is the module that going to be connect everything right so okay let's say here is your memory alu okay and then you have this this is your top level module right In, which is your com com.v so you have a module here mem.v right so this is mem.v alu oops block first so this is your alu alu dot v right so I mean this is your form dot v so everything is being connected here inside the module right so it's going to let's say you have input here and then you have also output right so yeah it's, it's kind of like main then every all of the other function is inside it right you're going to call it inside it so same goes here so this is a top level module so all of these uh, other modules will be placed in the uh, within the top level module. All right, that's a good comparison. Thank you. Who's that? Lim Yin Chung. Can get extra marks later. Huh? No, just kidding. But that's a good uh, response. Okay, now we can see all green here. Tick. We can be happy, right? No red thing. So if you see red, then you have to be sad, right? But don't panic. Just try to debug. Find the problem then you're going to solve it then you're going to get all green so you can see here zero errors four warnings right but right now warning we can just uh, ignore it but later if you go into very specific design might be warnings matter to you but in our case warning doesn't matter just uh, we can neglect it right so you can, you can see here there's an analysis synthesize filter place and route assembler generate program uh, files uh, time request uh, timing analysis Right, I just want to show you one cool feature here, right? So, uh, where is it? Uh? Let's see. I think this one. Okay, let's try to open technology map viewer. Okay, it's loading. Okay, guys. All right, so I'll show you again. So if you guys go here, and then there are a lot of tabs, right? So analysis. Okay, this is simple. All right, uh, forget about technology map viewer. Delete it in your mind again. Right, so what we're going to refer here is this uh, go to uh, analysis and synthesis part. No, no, no. Where is it? Let me just go. How do I see in the picture? Is it? Oh man. Wait, wait. No, it's gone. Ah, okay. Netlist viewers. So go to analysis and synthesis. Go to netlist viewers. Go to RPL viewer. Right. Okay. Now you guys can look and check your circuit. Guys, this is a features that they have in this tool. You know, just to help you verify it. Right, so that you can see how your circuit looks like so because now we are doing it in programming right so we want to see how it looks like in the circuit so you guys can go into that option then now we are looking at it right so now we can uh, say that okay our circuit has been constructed correctly so you can see the input output and the gates are being uh, using here right and then here the output okay now we can be happy that uh, our circuit is correct Okay, then after that, what we need to do? Okay, now we have to simulate, right? So we have to give input and see what are the output of our circuit. Okay, now, same again, you can go here or you can go to file. Okay, what we are looking here, right? So here we have to find in verification debugging files. 
and we are looking for university program VWF. So what is VWF stand for? Vector waveform file, right? Okay, now press OK. Ta-da, now you get something like this. And what we're going to do here, so click, right click, and then insert node or bus, then go to node finder, then click list, right, then I mean, there are two options you can add one by one, but to make your life easier, just add the whole thing in. All right, so we have it here. Then click OK. I make it fast because I'm recording it, right? So I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm going to upload to you to YouTube and you guys can refer it, right? You can watch it every day or you can listen to it while you want to sleep, okay? All right, so here is the, uh, the, the simulation window, right? So how are you going to simulate it? So normally we want to simulate all the possible inputs. So we have uh, two inputs, right? So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, right? So we have 0, 0, then we can create 0, 1. So just highlight whichever you want, then right click, value, right? So you can force to high here. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1. Then we want to have 1, 0, right? So 0. To highlight which part that you want. See, be patient. You know, okay, okay. fail. All right. And then, uh, value was high. Okay. Then zero 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 one one zero. Then here just add another one. One, one. So we are testing all possible values. Okay, so we have set our input here. Then we go and run our... There are two types of simulation. One is functional, one is timing. What are, difference, are the difference between functional and timing simulation? Functional simulation, you don't take care of the delay in the circuit, right? I mean, all of the circuits, they have delay, of course. So, uh, if you want to take care of the delay, you want to see how the delay affect your design, you run timing simulation. But if you don't care about the delay or so you want to just you in terms of functionality, it works as the theory tells you, right? So, then you run the functional simulation. Okay, now, we are running the functional simulation. Okay, let's save it. Whatever name that you want to give. See yeah. Some windows should pop up. Okay, that thing's happening. Not good. Oh, it's processing, I think. Zero percent. It's better. Ah, all right, it's processing. So, uh, you guys going to get this kind of window, right? But I'm pretty sure some of you going to face some... Uh, pro okay, now I'm simulating it two times. Okay, that's great. Okay, so uh, some of you might face a problem, right? But again, uh, don't uh, panic, right? So, there's always a way out of uh, any error. You, try, you can try to Google it. Uh, you know, some settings... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Changes can help you to make it work fine. If you can still cannot uh, solve it, then we can uh, discuss it and try to find solution in the group, right? Okay, now we are waiting for the output to come out. So it's taking a while. So it's depend on your 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 laptop uh, processor ability, right? For mine, it's taking a while because it's too old to run fast. Okay, let's wait. Oh man, this is taking a lot of time, okay? That's okay. Just relax and wait. All right, so it's coming right now. Where is it? Oh, 
Ah, finally it's coming out. Alright, so you can see the difference here. So here the window that you set your input, right, is not being stated that read only because you might have confused it, right? So this is the result window. So it is read only. So you cannot change anything here because it's just showing your result. So as you can see, you can check, right? So you can check your half header, how the half header should function. So just check it. See, if you give 0, 1, then your S going to be uh, 1. If you give 1, 0, your S output going to be 1, right? Your C out going to be 0. Only when you give A1, B1, then your C out going to be 1. So you, you have to verify it whether your uh, circuit is correct or not. So if your circuit is correct, then be happy, submit it, get good result, right? But if you don't get the I mean, correct result, then go and fix it, go look into the code, what's wrong, try to change, then compile, then try to simulate again until you get it correct, then be happy, right? Submit, get good marks. Right, guys, so this is an important thing for you guys to go through. At least after this, you guys can download can I see my screen? Oh, are you serious? Guys, can you see my screen? Can. Okay, so that means yes, something sir. wrong. Can, huh? So something wrong with Abdi Rahim, right? So I think you might want to go and uh, check your internet connection. Right, so I think if you get a, you have a good internet connection, you should be able to see my screen. If you cannot see, don't worry. I'm going to upload it on YouTube. You guys can refer it to it later. Right? Because I want to be a famous YouTuber. Alright. So, guys, I think uh, this is uh, the end of our lab session. So, as you guys can see, there are a lot of examples. Right? I'm not going to show you, tell you one by one because you guys have to go through it and have to try to understand it. Right? So, this is your effort. Right? So the, the more, I mean, programming, guys, the more you do it, the better you will get into it, right? So this is a basic learning concept of programming. It's about skills, right? The mastery skills. The more you do it, the more you face error, you better you get at it, right? So it's same like playing football, right? The more you play football or soccer, you're going to be better at it, at it, right? So if you guys play less, soccer of course you're not going to be good at it right so i mean all the things are the same so especially in programming so spend a lot of time in it that uh, i'm pretty sure you guys are gonna uh be good at it it's just gonna be kacang putih for you guys right so you can eat it happily easily all right any question before we end our session here Any question, guys? Okay, that's good. All right, so, uh, okay, that's great. Okay, no question. Okay, guys, uh, so uh, thanks for joining the class. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I want to let you know that I'm happy to see you guys. I'm happy that I have the opportunity to uh, teach you guys uh, this semester. Uh, and I'm you know, I'm, I'm really happy I'm teaching this subject because this is my favorite subject and I'm really enjoying teaching it to you guys. So I'm hopefully that uh, I'm hoping that you guys are also happy uh, listening to me teaching you guys. If you're not, if you don't understand, please let me know. Reach out to me, reach out to your friend, you know, so that uh, uh, you guys can, uh, you know, try to make yourself, push yourself to understand this subject because it's, I think for me it's important. You know, guys, the grade, of course, for you guys, is matter, right? For me, it's not, it, it doesn't really matter for me. The most thing that I want, I want from you guys is that you get something out of my subjects, you know? So I'm hoping that this is going to give added value to you guys to help you guys success in your future endeavor. All right, so how we pass up the lab, I've told you, there's no submission for the lab. You guys have to do it. So, but we're going to test you guys in lab assignment, right? So that's why we have lab assignment. So you guys have to do work on it, practice. Then I'm going to, we're going to give you guys a uh, lab assignment. Right? So that's how we're going to give my. So if you guys don't score in your lab assignment, then that's it. 
it's going to be custom right the lab assignment going to be custom it's going to be the same for everyone so you are you I mean forget about copying and and try to you know use your friend's code because it's not going to work so you guys really have to know how to do your coding as you're going to fail the lab assignment yeah how long is the lab assignment the lab is going to be long as it's covering all the lab session that you guys have done before all right but you guys going to be giving be given uh, a period of time to complete it of course right of course we're going to give you a period of time to complete it don't don't worry about it oh no no it's going to be days it's going to be around like one week or one week or two weeks all right okay all right guys any more question So probably be hard, of course. <laughs> of course, the assignment, lab assignment.